When the Cold War ended, Russia's air power legacy was both proud and burdened. The mighty Su-27s and MiG-29s had proven their worth agile, fast, and lethal. But as the 21st century dawned, a new threat appeared on the horizon. Across the Atlantic, the United States had unveiled a ghost, the F-22 Raptor, a stealth machine invisible to radar faster than sound and deadlier than anything Russia had ever faced. For the first time in decades, Russia's skies risked being outclassed. Moscow's generals and engineers knew they could not rely forever on upgraded fourth generation jets. They needed something revolutionary, not just another fighter, but an answer to the Raptor itself. And so, in the late 1990s, Sukhoi Design Bureau began a secretive project under the coding PACFE, the prospective airborne complex of frontline aviation. Its purpose, to create a stealth fighter that could evade radar, engage multiple targets at once, dominate both air and ground missions, and bring Russia into the age of fifth generation air power. Years of design, struggle, and ambition followed. Prototype after prototype rolled out of hangars, each one pushing the limits of Russian aerospace. Then, on a cold morning in January 2010, the T-50 prototype took off for the first time, and with it, Russia's dream of a new generation left the runway. By 2017, the aircraft had earned its official name, Su-57 Felon, the most advanced combat aircraft ever produced by Russia. Design and engineering at first glance, the Su-57 is unmistakably Russian bold, muscular, and built for agility. But look closer, and you'll see something more. Stealth. Its airframe is a sculpture of blended geometry, sharp angles, swept wings, and a long, smooth fuselage that seems to disappear into the air. Its diamond-shaped wings and forward-swept edges are designed to scatter radar waves, making it far harder to detect. The Su-57 stretches about 20 meters long, with a wingspan of 14 meters and a wing area of nearly 79 square meters. It weighs around 18 tons empty and can take off at up to 35 tons fully loaded. But numbers only tell part of the story. The real secret lies beneath its skin. More than half of the Su-57's structure is made from composite materials, lightweight, heat resistant. Radar These composites reduce radar reflections and heat signatures, helping the felon remain a phantom on sensors. The engine nacelles are cleverly shielded. The intakes are curved into S-shapes to hide the turbine faces from radar. Even the landing gear doors, panel joints, and exhaust nozzles are serrated to bend and diffuse radar waves. Inside the cockpit, the pilot sits within a digital nerve center. Two massive touchscreen displays dominate the control panel, linked to a helmet-mounted display that projects targeting data directly onto the visor. Every sensor, radar, and weapon system feeds into one seamless digital picture. The NO36 Belka radar suite gives the Su-57 eyes sharper than any of its predecessors. Using active electronically scanned array, AESA technology, it can track dozens of targets across vast distances, even while jamming or engaging multiple threats at once. Infrared and electro-optical sensors cover the rest, detecting heat signatures of aircraft miles away, seeing what the human eye cannot... The flight control system, the KSU-50, blends computer precision with pilot instincts, making the Su-57 capable of performing extreme maneuvers that would push older jets beyond their limits. Its frame, its systems, its purpose, all built around one idea, to be unseen until it's too late. Engines and power, the Su-57's heart beats with twin turbofan engines. Originally, the AL-41A Fuich, the same lineage that powered the Su-35 flankery. Each engine produces 14.5 tons of thrust with afterburner, propelling the jet to a blistering Mach to about 2,440 kilometers per hour. But the real revolution lies in its future power plant, the Isdeli 30 engine lighter, more efficient, and far more powerful. Once fully operational, it will grant the Felon Super Cruise capability, the ability to fly supersonic without using afterburners, conserving fuel, and reducing heat signature. Its climb rate exceeds 330 meters per second, and its service ceiling reaches 20 kilometers above the Earth. From there, the sky is dark, the horizon curves, and the Su-57 becomes a silver arrow in the edge of space. With a range of 3,500 kilometers on internal fuel alone, it can strike deep into enemy airspace, engage its target, and return without refueling. 
But the numbers are only half the truth. What sets the Su-57 apart is how those engines smooth. They are equipped with three-dimensional thrust vectoring nozzles that can swivel and twist, giving the pilot unmatched control. The Phelan can pitch, roll, and yaw in ways few aircraft can replicate. It can perform a Cobra maneuver, raising its nose almost vertically while maintaining stability, or spin flat in mid-air and recover in seconds. In a dogfight, that means unpredictability, the kind that kills. Weapons and systems, every fighter jet is a weapon, but the su 7 is an arsenal disguised as a shadow. Hidden inside its twin internal bays are air to air missiles, guided bombs, and cruise missiles. The stealthy configuration allows it to engage without revealing its position. Its main air to air weapons include the R771 and the R37M, missiles capable of hitting targets more than 300 kilometers away. Against ground threats, it can carry KH-38 precision missiles, KH-59, MK-2 cruise missiles, and a variety of guided bombs weighing up to 1,500 kilograms each. When stealth is not a priority, it can mount external pylons carrying up to 10 tons of ordnance. And for close-range combat, it wields the GSH-30-1, a 30 mm cannon firing up to 1,800 rounds per minute. One burst is enough to tear a fighter apart. Supporting these weapons is an advanced electronic warfare sweep. The Su-57 can jam enemy radars, spoof incoming missiles, and share targeting data with other aircraft. Its data link allows it to work in teams, hunting in packs, striking from beyond sight. In every sense, the Su-57 isn't just an aircraft, it's a flying combat system. Combat and operational history from prototype to battlefield, that is the true test of any aircraft. In 2018, Russia quietly deployed the Su-57s to Syria. Officially, it was a test. Unofficially, it was a message. Operating out of Kamima Air Base, the jets flew several missions to test radar performance, electronic warfare systems, and weapons under real combat conditions. According to Russian sources, at least one KH-59 MK-2 cruise missile was launched during those sorties, though brief. The deployment proved the jet could survive and perform in an operational war. In the years that followed, production ramped slowly. By 2021, the first serial Su-57s entered active service with the Russian Aerospace Forces. During the Ukraine conflict, reports emerged that Su-57s were being used in long-range strike missions, launching standoff missiles from within Russian airspace. These operations were cautious, likely designed to protect the limited number of operational aircraft. In June 2024, satellite images revealed a damaged Suver V-7 at Aktabins reportedly hit by a Ukrainian drone strike. It was a stark reminder that even the most advanced machines remain vulnerable on the ground. To date, the Su-57's combat experience remains limited, but every flight adds data. Every mission refines tactics. It is evolving, quietly, purposefully. Tactics and Doctrine how do Su-57 pilots fight? Russian doctrine does not see the felon as a lone duelist, but as part of a system of systems, a coordinated force, where each aircraft is a node in a digital web. In the air superiority role, the Su-57 uses stealth to close undetected, guided by ground-based radars and airborne early warning systems. It locates targets using its AESA radar and infrared sensors, then fires long-range missiles before the enemy even knows it's there. If the fight turns close, the felon's agility takes over. Its vectoring engines allow it to twist and turn inside enemy maneuvers, locking on for a cannon shot or short-range missile kill. Four strike missions. The Su-57 can fly deep into contested airspace using its stealth and electronic warfare to evade detection then release precision munitions from internal bays before slipping away unseen. In a future vision of warfare, the Su-57 may also control unmanned drones, acting as a command aircraft that sends smaller, autonomous craft ahead of scouts, decoys, or even strike platforms. This concept, known as loyal wingman operation, is already in testing. It could transform the Su-57 from a fighter into a battlefield coordinator. Blending human judgment with machine precision. Its pilots are trained not just to fight, but to orchestrate the fight. Comparison with rivals to understand the Super 7 we must see it through the lens of its rivals. 
The F-22 Raptor America's first, fifth-generation fighter remains the benchmark. Its stealth is deeper. Its radar signature smaller. Its combat record unmatched. The Sufi-7 was never meant to be a clone of the Raptor, but a uniquely Russian interpretation of fifth-generation warfare? Where the F-22 is a pure air superiority platform, the Su-57 is a multi-rolling machine able to fight in the air, strike on the ground, and perform reconnaissance. It trades some radar invisibility for versatility and agility. Against China's J-20 Mighty Dragon, the comparison is equally fascinating. The J-20 favors long range, large missiles, and a more conservative flight profile, a hunter from afar. The Su-57, by contrast, is built for close-in agility and raw maneuvering. If the J-20 is the archer, the Su-57 is the swordsman. Analysts often debate which is superior, but superiority, in truth, depends on doctrine, pilot training, and integration. In those areas, the Su-57 still walks a difficult path. Its production numbers remain limited. Its engines and avionics, while advancing, are still being refined. Yet the felon's design philosophy combining stealth, thrust, and extreme agility makes it a fighter with a unique and dangerous personality. It may not be perfect, but in the right hands, it is formidable. Modern relevance. Today, the Sufi 7 stands at a crossroads between evolution and ambition. Russia continues to build more units each year, with the goal of fielding several regiments by the early 2030s. Production challenges persist. From engine supply to sanctions on high-tech components, but progress continues. The aircraft has begun to serve as a testbed for advanced technologies, new avionics, hypersonic missiles, artificial intelligence, flight systems, and drone teaming operations. An export version, the Su-57E, has been showcased at international air... Potential buyers have expressed interest, though no confirmed sales have yet materialized. Most crucially, the Super D7 serves as the foundation for Russia. S. Next generation of combat aviation, including the Su-75 Checkmate, a smaller single-engine derivative designed for ex- The lessons learned from the felon are shaping everything that will follow. In modern air warfare dominated by sensors, stealth, and data, the Su-57 represents Russia's statement to the world that it still dares to compete, still dares to innovate, still dares to fly in the company of giants. Emotional reflection. The skies fell in, in the cold silence of the upper atmosphere. The Su-57 glides, unseen, unbroken, unbroken. It carries within it decades of history, the dreams of Soviet engineers, the pride of Russian air power, the determination to remain a force among the clouds. Every rivet, every panel, every whisper of composite against the wind speaks of a philosophy that air dominance is not given, it is earned. To its pilots! The Su-57 is not just an aircraft. It is a living, breathing companion. Unpredictable, yet loyal. Fierce, yet graceful. They say you do not command the felon. You danced with it. Each mission begins in silence. The engines hum. The canopy seals. The world outside fades into blue. And when the throttles push forward and the jet leaps skyward, the earth falls away, and so does everything. Ordinary, from the ground, it is only a flicker. From the cockpit, it is eternity. In that moment, man and machine become one, the culmination of centuries of flight, war, and innovation. The Sufa D7 Felon stands as more than Russia's fifth-generation fighter. It is a symbol of persistence, of ambition, of the belief that even in a world dominated by technology and algorithms, the human will to master the sky still matters. Because, in the end, air power is not just about speed or stealth. It is about presence, the ability to appear where the enemy least expects, and to vanish before they can react. The Su-57 was built for that. It was born in secrecy, forged in ambition, and tested in the crucible of modern war. It is not perfect. But perfection was never the goal. Dominance was. And in the quiet heartbeat between takeoff and combat. When the engines roar and the sky opens wide, the felon becomes what it was always meant to be, a shadow of power. Cutting through the heavens, carrying a nation's pride on wings of steel and silence. 